today we have a uh, transmission oil filter. Uh, this is the oil filter that goes on the right side of the DCT. We're going to replace that filter without changing the oil. So we're going to take the bike, we're going to do some outside of the box thinking, we're going to lay the bike over, and we're going to change that filter. So here we have the uh, world famous boob cam, uh, the socket for removing the uh, panel or plate that covers the filter. Uh, we have the filter itself, we have the O-ring for the uh, cover plate, and we have the uh, hex socket for removing the cover or engine guard. Here we are down at the side of the motor in my backyard, and if I put that over that door, that looks like that's going to make it. But uh, if you really look at the dimensions, you can imagine that that might not make it in or out of there. And that, that's kind of a tight fit. Plus the door could be partially behind this panel. So I'm going to say, hey, let's remove the engine guard or shield before we get at that. That way I'm not struggling to remove this from this. So we're gonna All right, my hands are relatively clean. Make sure there's no metal on your fingers or anything. And reinstall the O-ring. Okay, make sure the uh, O-ring is nice and shiny. Put that aside. You can see the filter here has an outside mark. When you remove this, always have a finger stabber handy. Pop that out. So now, you can put the other one back in. And the rubber O-ring is going to seat that. So that's in there nice and easy. No big deal. Here I got oil all over my shorts, so I'm going to have to wash them.
there's usually an upside and a downside and there's going to be some spring tension that's going to pop that out. Make sure the holes line up, so we're going to spin it until the holes line up. Our bolts are the same size, so we're going to spin one on. So now, put the other one back in. And the rubber o-ring is going to seat that. So that's in there nice and easy. No big deal. Take the door. And uh, there's usually an up and a down. So take the door an upside and a downside. Ooh, wow. We're back here with the door. We're just going to spin that back on. Try to do it left, right, and left. Don't just lock down one side and then lock down the other, you'll have a problem. Ooh. Try to do it left, right, then left. Don't just lock down one side and then lock down the other, you'll have a problem. So, don't look into the camera, look into the door, see which way the orientation is. There's no arrow on the door. I'm going to have to fix that. You can see here I got the orientation wrong on the door. Um, experiencing a lot of uh, heat from the sun. It started to get very hot very fast out here. Uh, so um, I was looking in the viewfinder and I didn't realize that the orientation was upside down. I cranked this down and broke this against this piece right here. Okay, so I broke the door, big deal, you know. I got it right. I won't make that mistake again. I'll have to order a new door. But uh, I'm going to ride it like this. I'm going to fix the door and paint it gloss black. Uh, when you're finishing up your work, get a nice solvent. Uh, anything will do that uh, cleans up oil and just, you know, clean up the area. Get rid of the excess oil and, you know, anything that's making it look dirty and clean it up, right? Made a mistake. Move on. I got oil everywhere. I got oil on my pants too. I mean, really, just terrible. So I'm gonna check the torque on that. I'm gonna check the torque on that later, but that's locked down. That should be enough to keep the oil sealed in there. Pipe. That'll smoke. Wow, look at all the dirt in there. So much dirt. Look at the dirt all over the exhaust pipe and everything. Wow. Okay, there's, there's some oil that got down in there. Clean that up too. We'll reorient the bike and clean it again. The orientation is this way. Boy, I'm an idiot, I, I broke the door. 
So I'm gonna have to order another door. The O-ring will still work, but I need another door. I've got the first coat of paint on it after I broke it, and uh, that's going to be fine. I'll just sand it down, refinish it, it'll look great. So breaking stuff is half the fun. Go out there and break stuff, and fix it, and learn from it, and have fun with it. When you're here, always take note of other things. My coolant is a little low, so I'm going to have to put some more coolant in the bike. All right, so we're well into the evening hours. Um, there's always something you're not going to like about the bike. So if you do find something you don't like, fix it. If the grommets keep falling out, tape them in. When you take things apart, you're always going to find something you don't like. For instance, I'm low on coolant. This wire here was out. Put things where they belong if you can. Special job. There we go. So, you know, I could put a pair of pliers on that and make sure that that doesn't come out, but that's fine. So I'm gonna add some coolant. When removing your radiator cap, remove the screw. Don't just unscrew it. You'll spend 10 minutes trying to get that cap off. Completely remove the screw, and then the cap will come free no problem. Use a copper pipe with a funnel on the end. I usually use this for oil. Today I'm gonna to use it for coolant. Today I'm gonna to use the HP coolant from Honda. Uh, don't cheap out on this. Uh, this is kind of important. Your engine won't last nearly as long. So use their formula. Pour slowly. Because it's gonna overflow. <laughs> Yeah, anything more than a trickle and that's gonna overflow. Is the tank down here filling? And the answer is no. So, what am I gonna do with this? You know, the, uh, the hose is actually higher than the top. So, what I'm gonna do is fill it from below, not just from above. This cap only goes on one way. Make sure that when you put it on, it's, it's on level. Use a rag to turn it, lock it in place, and uh, <clears throat> then re-put in your screw. Now, my problem is I have a light here, so I need a long screwdriver to get the locking screw back in. Gently turn the screw until it's all the way in. You don't need a big screwdriver with a sharp point, use a small one, and just snug it down. That's it. Fill your coolant tank from below. That's gonna be a little tricky to open, so let's try using a rag. That is stuck on there, so I'll try the other hand. There it goes. If it doesn't work with the left hand, use the right hand, and then get a tool. Don't just grab a pliers first thing because you might break something. So there's the cap. Now we have to fill it. Can we get the bottle in here? I don't know, I don't think so. So how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna fill that? Transfer the bottle into a smaller cup and then pour that cup into the opening. Okay, so here, here's a cup. Let's try a practice run.
All right, that'll work. What about the copper tube? Oh yeah, that'll work. So we can use the copper tube up here. So three uses for this funnel. One for here, one for here, and one for over here. Let's try doing this with one hand. Very slowly. Very slowly. Grab a flashlight, forgive my, uh, <clears throat> my thumb. Stick it right there. Can you see the level now? Okay, so that's pretty good. If I were to straighten up the bike, that would reach the top line. So you can see now, as I move the light, where the level is. The level's smack in the middle. So I'm going to put the cap on, make sure that that's correct uh, again, and then I'm going to put the cover back on and we're going to go out to ride. Now, some things about the cover. Uh, I have uh, put some electrical tape and some enamel on top of that electrical tape to lock it in. Over here, that grommet never really ever pops out. There's some electrical tape over there. I'm just gonna leave that the way it is without the enamel. And there's some electrical tape over here so I can pop the cover back on easily. I gotta tell you, you know, when I first did this, this cover was really frustrating. Now, I can just pop it off. Pop the sides, pop the front off, and it falls out. Sometimes you just gotta do things a few times to figure out how things work and how they fail. Once you do that, you can be very successful, but you got to do things multiple times. So here we are all fixed with the cover on. Uh, don't dwell, just fix it and ride. Sometimes you just need to take time to fix things. Like over here, that little tiny crack. You just got to fix it. Fix it and move on. It's a bike. It's a thing. It's going to break. Don't get upset. Ride your bike. Enjoy your bike. Okay. After doing repairs or any type of maintenance, always heat cycle your bike. Make sure you know that when it warms up, it's not leaking. While your bike is heat cycling, clean up your messes. Go over and review the things that you've done. For example, I shortened the spacer behind this bolt because this fender wasn't really going on properly. So that's a big plus. It's a little tiny spacer you cannot see. It's inside there. But the fender is now on a lot tighter. I had another gold bolt over here. These are alloy bolts. They're generally stronger than plain old steel bolts. So if you have such a bolt, use it. Check to make sure your radiator cap is not leaking and that you've seated it correctly. Make sure you're not leaking down here on your reservoir and that the cap is on. Make sure you're not leaking down here. If you are, you're going to find a puddle right there. So, I did everything correctly except I put that cover plate on upside down and broke it. Okay, the bike is heat cycled. I'm gonna take it down the driveway and into the street, turn around, come back, and get ready for the next ride.
bad. Not bad at all. All right, we'll run up through the wash. The only thing that I should mention is, is JB Well takes about uh, 24 hours to really cure. So I'm going to let this sit overnight, and uh, after that sits, I'm going to put the uh, cover back on. So I'm not going to put the cover back on tonight. I'm not going to ride it. I'm just going to let that cure, uh, and that'll be rideable, and there won't be a problem with it, and uh, it should be fine. And one day I'll maybe buy another door, but for now, that is repaired. So uh, we did a filter change. Uh, we fixed some of the grommets. We fixed our front fender. I had to grind one of the spacers a little bit because it was just too thick. Um, we added uh, a gold bolt here. Uh, there's another gold bolt on the other side. And that fender is on there nice and tight. So we made some improvements while we were working on it. So hey, when bad things happen, make it better. Make it right. Do it again. Want to learn to do something right? Learn how to remove it, not once, not twice, but dozens of times. That's starting to spin a little funny. So I'm gonna have to look at that and see if I need to replace that bolt. shouldn't require that much torque. Okay, that, that's starting to wear, but uh, that bolt is still good. That's fine. Remember I said how, you know, I made this so that it can be easily removed. I changed the way the grommets worked and looked. I used some electrical tape on this side because this side is cut. Now, it's a lot easier. And I can remove this without struggling. The original design required that you fight this thing to get it off. You don't need to fight these parts. If something is that difficult to remove, Try to re-engineer it so that it's easier to remove. This is the fun part about bikes, is making them better and easier. A couple months ago, I painted this. Now, I ride in the dirt, and I'm constantly exposing this thing to oil, dirt, grease, and detergents. But you know what? It's still there, and it's made from binary epoxy. That is my quiet core and it works great. Painting and refinishing is an art and a science in itself. After a few years of screwing things up really bad, I learned that it takes a little persistence. And if you don't have a paint booth or professional grade paints, sometimes you just have to work at it. First try, second try, third try. Hey, it's a fact of life. But once you get it right, you can do some pretty nice things. We're back the next day, and uh, the part that's broken is there. I'm tapping it to make sure that it won't break off. And it looks like the JB Weld has cured and locked in the top part of that plate. So the part that's broken is actually behind this. But this looks terrible. And I love gold. So let's see if we can do something about the way that that looks. This is my nine-year-old Subaru. It has 150 mile an hour tires on it and it has racing components underneath. This car is mechanically a Subaru STI, or WRX, but it's a family car. Not only that, but the performance components on this car exceed the capabilities of a WRX or STI. It has adjustable suspension, as well as a 330 to 350 horsepower engine. 
Wow, this thing can move. This is my wife's 2005 Honda CRV. The wheels are larger, it has performance tires on it, and it has European fog lights. It is very deceiving. From close up, it's a complete piece of crap. It's got scratches, it's got dents, it's got all kinds of problems, but it drives like a brand new car. It's pretty obvious that the paint did not stick. All I wanted to do was get paint on it so I could lock this piece into place. So the idea was not to give it a finish. The idea was to glue that panel into place until it cured. And the paint will cure faster than the JB Weld. And the paint acts like a glue. Kind of holds things into place. Well, that was a success. And that comes from years of just playing with things. Paints can work like glues. They can seal things up. Uh, they can be very, very useful if used properly. So sometimes you just gotta experiment until you get things right. So here, I'm just putting on tape to make sure that I don't accidentally scar something while I'm working on it. I'm trying to get the tape as close as possible to the various nooks and crannies. Sometimes you gotta just kind of put things in behind like that and tear off the extra when it doesn't fit. I'm just gonna push that in. So I wanna make sure I get this back corner pretty good. All right, so let's move on to the next segment. All right, so 120 grit. While I'm sanding here, I'm also testing to make sure that my JB weld is held up. If it snaps off, then the answer is, uh -uh, nope, it did not hold up. This is also kind of hiding the bend and the break in the metal. Thank you. 
the magic of working with the heat gun is that the paint cures really quickly. Uh, you can see when the paint's curing because the tape bubbles. So uh, that's not coming off on my fingers at all. That's, uh, that's ready to assemble. And that's only been, what, five, ten minutes? So, yeah, let's, uh, let's assemble that.